author and intimacy expert Laura M. Brotherson, host of the Marital Intimacy Show, educates and inspires women to create a mutually fulfilling, intimate, and passionate marital relationship, emotionally, spiritually, and sexually. Hi there. Welcome to the Marital Intimacy Show, available at themaritalintimacyshow.com. My name is Laura Brotherson. Thanks for tuning in today. Well, we get to talk about sex again today. How fun is that? The title of this episode, number 40, is Love Making When Couples Have Teens at Home Q&A. So, let's get started. First, I just wanted to thank everyone who continues to send in their questions and these great topics for these Marital Intimacy Show episodes. Here's one that I received recently that I thought would be helpful to many people. So here's the question this mother had. How does one overcome the inhibitions caused by having teenage children at home? And how much should they be involved in realizing that their parents are sexual beings? When I was a teen myself, I knew my parents had intimate relations, and I knew that was natural and right. But I hated knowing when that was happening, even though they were discreet. We have a 16-year-old son at home. He and I have a very close relationship and are able to communicate pretty openly. But after reading your book, I'm beginning to think that somehow I should start introducing the idea that the sexual relationship is beautiful and wonderful in marriage, so that he gets that idea, that his parents participated in and enjoyed that part of their marriage. But how do I do that without making him feel uncomfortable? And how do I help him feel okay with the idea of parent sexuality? Thanks for any thoughts you may have on the subject. These are great questions. I mean, it brings up the whole challenge of lovemaking when when teens are around as well. You know, my husband and I often discuss the topics of my shows on our date night. So when I read him this question, his first smart aleck comment was, um, for a teenage boy, I don't think you have to worry about making him feel okay about sex. He feels pretty okay about it already. I think her primary concern, though, is more about teaching her son something, which we'll get to in just a minute. You know, I I think we personally seem to be dealing with this issue more and more ourselves um, as our kids are getting older, and especially, especially during these summer months when it's harder to get these older kids to bed at a decent time. Anyways, I I think there are some general principles or overriding concepts here that are key in in the challenge of lovemaking when you've got older kids around. So obviously everyone's uh, circumstances are going to be a little different based on the ages of your kids or their personalities or whatever when you, when it comes to this challenge of, of lovemaking. So each of you will have to figure out what specifically is going to work best in your home. But here are some things to consider. So, number one, be discreet. You know, as this mother mentions, it's important to be discreet. Use a lock on your bedroom door. Wash lingerie separately from the family laundry so your kids don't have to see things like that. And, of course, you want to try to be quiet when lovemaking, but you also need to not let yourself get obsessed about it either, or that can be counterproductive to enjoying lovemaking. So there's a careful balance there. Secondly, um, if your kids ask questions, then then of course you want to answer them, but you want to answer with as little information as you can, so as to not create mental pictures in the in their minds. You know, and this is especially important for teenage boys that that already are having plenty of thoughts of that kind anyway. So the second the second item is to share as little information as necessary. And, of course, it's going to depend on their age and even their personality, as I've mentioned before. (laughs) I was kind of laughing to myself as I'm working on this because I think we've got a child that is probably going to start figuring some things out and uh, start asking questions as well. Like, I can imagine him saying, "Why, why do you guys have music on in your room at night sometimes? Or he might ask, why do you have, like, weird colored lights on in your room at night? Or, why do you lock your door sometimes? And, you know, up until lately, our kids are have usually been asleep and would only notice something like that by accident. But these darn summer late nights haven't been helpful. 
And some kids are not the kind to ask questions, even if they do notice something, but some are. So just be prepared. For example, so to the question of why the door is locked, this would be an opportunity for you to teach your kids about couple time, which brings us to number three: teach the importance of couple time in marriage. So, if questions come up, or you do feel the need to casually mention something, then you can help your teen understand that to have a strong marriage, parents need to have some uninterrupted couple time sometimes. And you can even add, "And that's all you need to know for now. Until you're getting married, then we can talk more."、Uh, that's something that I would have to say to this one child of mine, I think. But like this mother's concern for her son. It's it is important for teens to understand that the sexual relationship in marriage is good, and it's also important for them to know that this is a sacred subject. But it's open for discussion, especially as they prepare for marriage themselves. Now, one of the best ways for our kids or teens to really get this that the sexual relationship in marriage is good is for us to have a healthy sexual relationship in our own marriages. So if if you're someone that rebuffs your husband's kisses or playful touches in the kitchen, then that message is the one that's going to overpower whatever your words are anyway. So the fourth point is to be a good example. You know, this really is the key point in her question about about teaching her son about the sexual relationship being good and beautiful. It's the example that you set, in addition to maybe some casual comments that you make here and there to reinforce that that concept. And the fifth point is be comfortable with sex and have a healthy sexual relationship yourself. Kind of what, like we've just mentioned, this mother asks about not making her son uncomfortable in in having some kind of discussion about the sexual relationship in marriage. But the thing is, is that if you are comfortable with your sexuality and with the sexual relationship in marriage, then you are a lot less likely to communicate embarrassment or elicit embarrassment from your your kids. They they really learn by our example. You know, it really bothers me how many young people are so grossed out by their parents kissing or being affectionate in some way. You know, and I know that some of it is just kind of a show. It's like the in thing to do to be grossed out by that. But I really want to encourage parents to not let their kids get away with that kind of response and get all gagged out by the idea of of sex or even affection. You know, you don't need to make a big deal about it. But I would really like to see. See parents help their kids change that kind of grossed-out response to teaching them about how lucky they are that their parents love each other so much, and and just how there needs to be a little bit more respect and positiveness about about sex and sexuality. That would just be great in changing kind of this whole negative taboo about sex in the first place. So number six is just to keep the topic of sex more positive and and try to cut down on this negative, grossed out response that kids, teenagers like to give sometimes. Okay, so lastly, number seven is to be a little more creative in, with your love making. So in addition to this mother's concern about sending a positive message about the sexual relationship in marriage, this whole kind of situation is often accompanied by the challenge of finding. Discreet time to make love. <laughs>、uh, I guess this is why our children have now. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be telling you this. Have now been dropped off at the movie theater for the first time by themselves. And I, I also don't recommend buying a new home to address this problem. But it's really nice if you happen to live in a home where your children's bedrooms are on the other side of the house instead of right next to yours. I guess I now understand why there were so many homes with that split bedroom setup when we were looking for a house ten years ago, because at the time we had babies and young children, so I I couldn't even imagine why anyone would want their bedrooms way over on the other side of the house. Um, now I get it. <laughs> Maybe we need to get a new house. I don't know. But other ways to be a little more creative might include calling your husband home from work、uh, to have a nooner or two、uh, when you know the kids are in, are in school, or maybe you need to snag a quickie or two when you know they'll be gone for a bit. I just recommend that you be sure to use the bedroom lock when there's any question. Okay, okay. 
Well, there you have it. I hope this has been as fun for you as it has been for me. But I do hope this has given you some food for thought. If you have older kids that may be getting a little more aware of things, and if you are trying to communicate something in, in, more positive about about the sexual relationship and about about your marriage. And maybe we ought to talk more about talking to your kids about sex in general in some of our upcoming episodes. So look forward to that. I do hope you'll really think about what kind of message you're sending your teens about sex in general and its importance in marriage based on your own example. This has been episode number 40, Love Making When Couples Have Teens at Home Q&A. On the Marital Intimacy Show with Laura M. Brotherson. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll be back next week with more great insights for strengthening your marriage. And be sure to check in at our website, strengtheningmarriage.com, to learn more about strengthening your marriage intimately. And if you haven't connected with us on Facebook yet, be sure to join us on our Marital Intimacy Show page. I hope you'll share the Marital Intimacy Show with others and help be a part of strengthening millions of marriages. Until next time, this is Laura Brotherson with the Marital Intimacy Show. Have a great day and make yours a great marriage.